Hello and welcome to this discussion on your IP of future with Creative First. Our guest today is screenwriter Atika Chauhan. Atika has won critical acclaim for co-writing Chapak, a film based on the life of acid attack survivor Lakshmi. Her stellar work also includes Guilty, Margarita with a Straw and Waiting. She began her journey as a print and TV journalist and has worked for the Hindu and CNN IBN. She graduated as a screenwriter from Pune's Film and Television Institute of India, FTII, in 2008. Atika, welcome to this discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Lohita, for having me. Tell us a little bit about your journey from a journalist to a screenwriter. Uh, it was the usual. It is exactly like it happens. It belongs to your 20s. It's you like exploring yourself as a young person who has an urge to write and you don't know how good you really are. Uh, but you want to develop fiction and in a city like Delhi, which kind of like uh, enables your journalistic future really quickly because it's a city where media flourishes, uh, but doesn't really know how to shape your dreams of writing fiction, except except if you're like more, more inclined to do drama. And I wasn't like I wanted to write films, but I did not know how. So I was like really just working in areas which were adjacent to that dream not really knowing what to do with what I wanted to do. Uh, and I always thought that eventually I'm going to write novels because I had like a, I thought I had like a pitara of stories inside me right from like as a child, that was just me. Uh, but I did not know how to channel it till I actually, I think one thing led to the other where I became a journalist. Um, and uh, that led me to companion colleagues and meet people who, who knew how I, how I could shape this? So that influence that influence gave me an early start where I uh, where I immediately like within a few years of journalism in Delhi I took the I went I decided that I'm going to go to the film school and then a few years at the film school and then I was in Bombay. So for me it was that sort of a transition. Uh, it it panned over like a few years. I couldn't do anything overnight. There was there was <clears throat> come from a like uh, like I had to figure how I'm going to like pay my rent and all that. Like I was totally self-made. There was no one backing my dreams. And I'm actually grateful for that part of it now. Now, like, because I think the part that I had to like really involve myself in every bit of the journey where I had to take care of, uh, you know, I had to be cognizant of how I'm going to do this. Okay. I have a dream, but how I'm going to actually achieve these goals and like, what are my sub goals to get to that bigger point? has always been very nourishing to me as a writer. And I think that part of negotiation that women go through while dealing with all these minor things is what also gives my, I think my storytelling, like some kind of like um, a lot of uh, meat. So because it's all experiential, because it's it's something like, so now I actually, when I look back, I'm very grateful for all the challenges. So. So, you know, uh, I had the privilege, I will say, to screen Margarita with the straw at the U.S. consulate in Mumbai. Mm -hmm. So it was part of our, you know, uh, you know, Indo, uh, you know, uh, Indo-U.S. relations. And it was such a beautiful movie. And what was amazing is everybody connected to it, right? Because of the way it's written. So do you think that a formal education, especially going to film school, is really required or it's, you know, creativity is enough? Because you were already a writer. I think there are two questions in your one question. So I don't know if I have the time and the liberty to break this down, but uh, Margarita as a film, uh, uh, you know, it was, so there are two things to it. It's, it's, it's also the politics and the, and the latent empathy of, of, of that story that necessarily will not come to you from going to a film school. That is something that where you need to be experientially as a human being and like to respond to that material um, uh, where you are uh, in, in two aspects of your life. One as a writer, like your ability to actually express the empathy that you that you can experience. So there are two aspects to it. One is your emotional growth and one is your ability to be able to capture that growth. And none of most of this uh, you could be uh, you could you could be pushed towards it in the film school but not necessarily so these are i feel these are three different aspects of being a skilled writer uh, so margarita because as a film also did not really belong to any cookie cutter sort of 
film genre right like it was a it's a hybrid film which which tells its own story it's a very experiential drama so for i i think that was the beauty of that film that it allowed you to uh, as a even as a co-creator on the film it allowed me to access spaces inside me which were deeply buried uh so uh, did the film school teach me that not really but the, did the film school teach me anything of course it did like it 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 really gave me exposure and made me warm to the idea like i was already primed to tell like important stories um going to the film school at the time that i did and the kind of peers that i had gave me a certain way of of uh, looking at cinema uh, to respect a certain kind of uh, form of storytelling uh, which might I, i i think i was already inclined to that sort of uh, political cinema but in case i wasn't like i think going to the film school at that point and i reinforced it it like gave it gave that vision legs uh, so so for me yeah, that kind of education helped me consolidate what i already was that that so that way the film school helped me but even if i hadn't gone to the film school it i think i would have still done okay so it was a combination of things maybe maybe all these factors made me that writer who could could capture that particular voice and maybe my directors you know kind of noticed that um that i actually not only that i was trained but i was also was emotionally primed to to speak to that character Atika you have a stellar portfolio as a writer could you share a little about the process of work that goes into writing such films uh, uh it's only recently that you know that i feel i there is a need for me to return to like the den and structure this for for others now that everyone's curious I mean, I've been working on the margins for a, for such a long time. No one really cared, and recently, like I, I feel I'm in. Mean, whenever there is there are releases and all that, like of course I get good media attention, and and I'm really grateful for it. But it's it is a combination of uh, there are things that you're doing intuitively, so you don't know you if you're following any form or process because I feel everyone's process is correct. uh there is no right or wrong way of arriving at solutions it these are very the, the reason why it's called creative work is because creativity means that you're going to break some rules uh, you're not literally following tradition right like so uh, yes of course you need to understand what is a routine and a traditional way of doing anything for you to be also able to walk away from it and find your own method uh but for me it's my methods are mostly mad and i wouldn't that's why i'm a little like uh, you know i normally i i get asked a lot to teach and because i find it so difficult to to part with my process because it's not that i'm hiding it but i'm mostly like how do i tell you that okay wait 20 hours the line will come to you it will sound loony right like the line will come to you but stay with it stay with it like how do you how do you so these are the processes that i have these are very like mambo jumbo i and i find the word spiritual very vacuous lately but these are actually very spiritual processes um uh, the idea is that i mean i stay committed to my mood and my themes and i stay with the characters and i let them linger and then i feel that the voices find me i actually keep rewriting something till i find that till i hit the right spiritual note of who this character is and then i think after that it's it's it finds a flow like it's literally like how it's exactly what how actors also like you know access a certain voice inside them and uh, where do these voices come from some of it i believe comes from our experience like if we if we are sharp observers of life and we are constantly keeping like if we are literally like human radios and we are keeping the frequency out and we are constantly recording things on, at the back of our head so it's like me right now making a cognizance from the side like how you're nodding your head or what your being is or where are you updating from what is your energy right now like me keeping a cognizance like that and then accessing that if i had to for example create the character of like a reporter who may have 
had done a few things before this who may be slightly annoyed with her speaker at the moment or you know so basically stuff like that so so for me to pre- to have that thing at the back of my hand back of my head and have a laboratory like that or a library like that from which from at the time that i need something i can pick this voice or that voice and i can rearrange that on paper uh but so some of it is obviously the the human experience sharp like when you live deeply and some of it actually comes from collective consciousness however much uh, irrational that may sound a lot of the tropes are actually buried inside us like our belief in actually the polarity of that there is something good and then there is something bad and that that fact that it's so binary i feel it's we are strung around it in a way um where does this mythic sort of like a uh, uh, pit comes from it's very difficult to understand because this is how our dreams are also made this is exactly what the cambellian myth for example it's it's something that if you deeply investigate your own conscience you'll realize that you you are designed around a software and you are unable to break away from it and this is this i feel a storytelling like this actually more than anything else being a writer is not so much about being on the outside it's so much about a deeper investigation of uh how one human being works because if you if you actually crack how you work you will be able to understand everyone else there's there's that basic rule to it um so yeah my process is this my process is just to just to stay with things that's amazing i think i you know uh, what could be the possible challenges from a contractual point of view for a freelance screenwriter oh many um i uh, see the thing is i i'll 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 be very straight forward about this the uh, things were very shitty like 10 years ago or 15 years ago when i began uh, i mean i actually the first first th- few things that i did in bombay were without a contract uh, or like uh, there there were no emails there were in fact there was rarely a whatsapp record also of what we were doing um and uh, so a lot of it was uh, me being complicit to an exploitative system because i was so hungry and needy for work and uh, not just it's not just about livelihood also it's also when you're so needy for opportunities and uh, you know you just think that you're going to take off a person in the wrong way if you actually demand a contract or you'll ask for the right amount of fee that should be given to you at this time and it, it literally it's a very uh, uh, standard experience for most writers who li- begin begin their journey at least at the time that i began it just lit- yes. <laughs> it has tremendously changed and some credit has to be given to a generation of writers who came around the time that i did and the momentum that it kind of gave to the whole movement so so basically the influence of such bodies in india the fact that there is now a continued dialogue between such and then it's considered healthy it's considered healthy to 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 be to monitor your contract in a way where you kind of like it's it's for us to reach a point where we can negotiate this to the producer without looking hostile yes uh, i have t- i have t- it's taken a decade and it has taken some of us like some of us who were very like i used to be very very uh, uh, involved with swa uh, even till like 2 years ago now i can't i i don't have time but my loyalty is definitely belong there like i go for for one off event but i i was actively involved with all the you know in the activities of the sw i was a joint secretary for four years uh ec member the work that the screen writers association does is fabulous it the amount of professionally done yes yeah it's it's so they are there are some really dedicated warriors there who just have very single handedly tried to like even if you can convert three writers or make them cognizant of how they can position their rights how they can safeguard themselves how can they make like basic sanitization around the time like how to not given completely how what are those hacks in which you can like not piss off your producer and yet like look out for your interest uh, where you can already safeguard ensure yourself against a possible exploitation of your credit and your remuneration uh, stuff like that so i've seen the world change in the last 15 years i i i know that the last 5 6 years there's a tremendous change uh, because of the number of a the right the fact that writers became stronger they became more powerful in india 
so that gave them enough weight and lobby and the fact that more writers uh, came the stronger writers or the writers who uh, the more active writers came to support this movement this itself like you know gave gave the movement respect uh because otherwise it was a very scattered thing and uh, it felt like okay you are basically dealing with a behemoth uh which which can which was the producer's body uh where uh, you know they had like a very dic- dictator like attitude where they if they even when they were kind it felt like an aberration it felt like something isolated or it was only for one individual writer that they would break the rules or be fair to one writer but they wouldn't want to be fair to every writer so for for us to legalize this inch by inch we it's taken us a decade it's only going to get better from here i think the root out is for the for the writers at the top to unite and to and to take a stand because that's the only way and they, of course the writers at the top always will experience uh, some some sort of like a hostile pushback they will take the take some suffering for this but then that's the sacrifice you have you make for your community so. i think the biggest contribution that you possibly made at the swa is actually spreading awareness on registering scripts yeah because there was no awareness that scripts can be ip and also the you know trying to uphold the rights that you know screenwriter is part of the a very significant part of the creativity process so coming back to the craft uh you know can i quickly say something the even the fact that the ip law in this country has been evolving in the last decade you the fact that people have only been putting these uh trade you know like these uh st- st- amazing cases in the in the court and for them to become like milestone judgments and to be them to be used and then as a as a sample of how ip needs to be saved because then those judgments became a reference point for people to normalize conversations around these things all of this has happened in the last decade there was we have literally lived in a very dark period in this country till like the 90s till like even late 2000s where it was impossible to talk about these things without sounding like or oh, you're like being a you're being a problem maker or you're stop stalling the work you're not you're not a creative if you're asking for money etc cetera, etc cetera. and do you feel that uh, possibly that could also be because of the emergence of streaming a lot yes. of online content yes and negotiating and working with them is easier it's just uh, in, uh, i mean the producers like definitely must be hating the otts because it gave gave so much democracy and so much uh, there's so much scope for work that, that uh, there's so much development that uh, that needs to happen and so many contracts need to be made that the fact that the writer had no choices uh, made the producer also like uh, you know uh, cautious of how they approach the writers yes they they want good work out of a certain writer then they need to satisfy uh, the needs of the writer that he wants to bring on she wants to bring on board uh, so uh, earlier it wasn't the case now you know that if the 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 producers know if they don't sign the writer in time then there is another job waiting for them so this this obviously has that demand and supply chain has like really yes. tilted in our favor and that of course like changed everything you know coming back to the craft uh, you know wanted to have your opinion on you know the role of a screenwriter on set how effective is it uh, and does it really change when it's a film or a web series or is there a role at all once you've written the script in my experience it has been very project to project thing like so- on some sets it is necessary to be around when the film is being shot there is a reason for example maybe the film is extremely verbose and i have written it in a lingo or like given it a twang or 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 i understand the character ticks in a way which i know will improvise on the set and my director for example will not be able to improvise on the set so there is a reason for me to be there um and so of course that that necess- that i look the, the fact that one is legally uh, uh, uh bound to be there is different from the fact that or uh, you morally feel that you should be there 
you know you feel yes. like it is your project and you should be there and you are contrib- you're contributing to it creatively and of course it, how how it eventually comes out on the screen matters to you yes. so y- how your lines get delivered matters to you so you want to be there um but if anyone for example gives you a sort like for example at this moment touchwood i'm a very busy writer but if someone makes a condition on the on the contract saying that you know we're going to sign you for a five season thing we won't even give you the first season uh unless you do a five season deal with us and then you have to be present on every episode uh when we shoot it maybe i wouldn't would never want to make a commitment like that because i don't know how my life is going to pan out across the five things that i'm doing right now so, so uh, my question was more on you know uh, adding to the creativity so you know like it, if you're a writer does it really add to the creativity it does honest? but at the same time i'm that's why it is a very project to project thing because what happens is with each project your director changes it is the dynamic between a writer director for each project like in some some cases my directors have really valued my presence on the set in some cases it's not like it's not because i had a difficult relationship with my director but for example some directors like to own the work Yes. on the set they don't want the presence of another co-creator on the set this is not to say that they're insecure but that's their process like they want that centralized brief from them you know in some cases the actors are the directors are very very um, they're very happy that the writers on the set and they divide the responsibilities in a way like can you look after this particular actor so that they, they get like cued in into their character it completely so the nature of this sort of demand changes with each project like so that's my experience like it it sometimes that you are not wanted on the set and when when someone says this i respect it so what is your message to aspiring writers you know people who possibly would have also had the same journey as you dabbled into a little bit of journalism or you know do content writing and now want to do you know want to write films or web series you'll have to keep at it this is this is this is i mean you 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 can you can't do this uh, i mean you immediately won't make big bucks or like so you need to understand why you're doing this you need to have basic clarity of why you want to screen write or write in the first place uh currently right screen writing has become lucrative and it's also trending because there is so much opportunity for for one to explore this craft but i think somewhere one will one needs to just sit themselves down and take a call on why we are doing this because uh, it is it is a it's not a 9 to 5 job and it is going to be very demanding uh because of the varying nature of the different projects you are on some projects can be very taxing but at the same time extremely satisfying creatively but you don't know when you are working on it yeah you know you only can look back in retrospect and know that okay this is the kind of amount of shift that i experienced after i went through this experience but it, it may seem extremely challenging and daunting at the time that you are working on that project it so that kind of commitment can come from that sort of commitment comes from somewhere else your need to nourish yourself as a writer has to be a priority and then you stay committed to the the volatility of what you're going through the fact that the industry work is volatile is something you have to come to terms with um if you want to do more challenging projects work with more idiosyncratic people you will have to withstand a lot of uh, volatility and you have to build a system around which you don't feel frazzled each time like you need to develop your own shock absorbers this may not happen readily you even if you have a personality type this mean them is there still with things waiting for you to shock you uh so that's that and that that's the aspect of working in this line of work which is also so interesting that there's never a dull day but then there's also the other aspects that you never feel stable you will never feel safe so where does that stability and safety come from it comes from some kind of like an inner belief and clarity of your intent purpose what what you're going to do in 5 years how you see yourself growing as a writer like once you get into this in for example commission writing loop 
for the fact is a lot of us dream to be here right like we want to be picked by the top directors but over a period of time it gets exhaustive to write on briefs like even if it's the best director you can't do it so finding a balance how to take time off from market work and uh, and narish your own screen plays a lot of us like uh, i know some of the best writers we we feel so exhausted with the kind of multitasking that our work involves that we are unable to write our own screen plays uh, and it literally will take some time off like bahar se shutter band karna padega tabhi wo mauka aayega to you know give attention to your own stories but eventually one time or the other one will have to do it or one just has to have clarity that i want to do this where i am like this is happy I'm, uh, this is a happy place for me so that kind of frustration and there is a volatility to the job um, that also makes it extremely exciting and uh, unpredictable sometimes it's enjoyable sometimes it's not so these are the things you need to be prepared that this is not going to be your cookie cutter sort of like a profession everything is going to be um, there it's it's a it's a constant moving target like it's a you just don't know what you're like dealing with like it's a, it's a bazooka thrown in your direction from from a place you didn't expect so it's just all kinds of things are going on there too many stakeholders involved in every project and lots of things going on and the, i think the writer is the easiest fall guy uh, so that sort of like you have to just understand you're the first person who will be a blamed b let go of um and also like you people will be least, least grateful to you once the project is in production got it thank you so much atika for a great discussion and uh, have a wonderful day yes thank you thank you lovely